The Doozy 2014 is proudly brought to you by the KZN Department of Sport and Recreation, Isotonic Game, and Hunter. Well, it's a truly spectacular morning on day three of the Doozy Canoe Marathon. The paddlers setting off from Inanda Dam, a four kilometer pull to the wall. They portage over that and then the fun begins as they hit the big rapids and the big fresh cold water that'll sweep them down to Blue Lagoon and the finish in Durban. Well, these paddlers have made it down through Top's Needle and they're heading down towards the Burma Road takeout. Now, there's a real character change in the doozy on day three below the dam. The release of water, some 35 cumics today, has given the river tremendous energy, real pace, some white water. And I tell you what, it's, it's clearer and a little bit cooler than they've been used to for the last two days as they surge down to Blue Lagoon. So at the end of day two, it's a nine minute bonus in the bag for Andy Burkett and Spornello Zondi over Hank McGregor and Jasper Mocker. Who's going over, who's going around? That will all affect those final times. Camp Skuman and Jakob Adam a further 10 minutes back. As far as the ladies is concerned, there's nothing in it between two tigerish crews. And this one could go down to the wire. The final stage into Durban is 36 kilometers. It starts with the hall across Inanda Dam, then a testing series of rapids, all of them with unique characteristics that take you to the choice. Burma Road, go over or paddle around. After Burma Road, there are one or two testing obstacles before you hit the stretch of nine kilometers of flat water into Blue Lagoon. The third and final day and a fantastic flow of water coming out of Inanda Dam. Not only water going over the top, but 35 cubes of cold water coming out the bottom of the dam. And that's going to guarantee big water, thrills and spills and decisions aplenty as Andy Burkett and Spornello Zondi go slicing across the flat waters of the dam. It's a roughly 20 minute paddle to the takeout and look at the smooth takeout. This is so well drilled, so well rehearsed. Paddles in the boat, the boat never stops moving. Spornello takes Andy's paddle and the boat continues up the hill. It's a short up the hill and then down the other hill for about a kilometer and a half portage in total. And that takes them back down to the Umgani River. Meanwhile, behind them, Hank McGregor and Jasper Mocker, the chasers on the day, but they started with that nine minute deficit. Can they catch up? The side entrance and a surprisingly conservative decision. This perhaps tells what Andy Burkett and Sponello Zondi have got planned for the day. They could have shot this rapid tops needle from the tops, but they've decided to put in at the side, sacrificing a little bit of time, but they've earned that luxury with that nine minute lead. So they pull away on the beautiful, clear and cold water of the Amgani River and they start their charge towards 36 kilometers of whitewater and portaging and Blue Lagoon in Durban. And surprisingly again, Hank McGregor and Jasper Mocker in second, nine and a half minutes behind, have also opted to put in halfway down. A conservative decision. As you can see, the river is full and feisty and they don't want to make a mistake here. Mistake here could not only spin you out and cost you time, but if you get separated from your boat, a damaged boat or even a wrapped boat could end your race hopes here. Cam Skuman and Jakub Adam from the Czech Republic, who really have raced fantastically to stay in third place. Oh, Cam going straight over a rock in Top's Needle, but they get away with that one, and they are determined to hang on to that last spot on the podium. It's going to be a fascinating day's racing. Down into side shoot and the conservative option down the middle, elegantly done. Slicing between the rocks, this is a well-rehearsed line. Slightly slower, but again, it's the low-risk option. And this is going to be the tail of the tape for Andy Burkett and Spornello Zondi today. On the flat water, they're going to push as hard as they can. Hank McGregor and Jasper Mocker in shot here are charging as much as they can. As we go back and have a look at the women's race now, 
the women's race split between the laps time and the batches. So fascinating racing. Robin Keim and Abby Ulansky starting with a 30 second lead over these two. Abby AD and Anna Adamova still hurting from her injury on day one but determined to give her all on the final stage into Durban. This is one gutsy woman from the Czech Republic. Here they go through Top's Needle. Robin Keim and Abby Ulansky, cool, calm and collected, double defending champions heading for an elusive hat-trick. And behind them, it's the same decision putting in from the lower section. Oh, Abby Adi fitting her splash cover as they go through the lower sections of Top's Needle. But Coop, super calm and composed from Anna Adamova, and they get through Top's Needle in one piece. Somewhere behind them, uh, Bianca and Tamika Hall now desperate to hang on to their third place. They know that they have not much chance of catching up to first and second, but they desperately want to protect an under-23 place on the podium. It all comes down to Burma Road. The decision about 10 kilometers into the day stage, and Andy Burkett and Spornello Zonde, obviously first there, have opted to push their way up the hill. Andy Burkett struggling to run all the way to the top. It's key that they run this one in a fast time. Now, a fast time of Burma is around 26, 27 minutes. And the man behind him, Sponello Zondi, is arguably the best runner with a boat on his back in the world of canoeing. And they are pushing up to the top of Burma Road. Way, way down in the valley, Hank McGregor and Jasper Mocker have also gone the same route, surprisingly. But they know that going around is simply going to cost them more time. And to stay competitive, they are going to have to run over this torturous portage at Burma Road. Jasper Mocker pushing hard. This really isn't his game, running a doozy portage over a hill. Surfski star that he is. Meanwhile, back on the other side, it's a decision to go around for Cam Skuman and Jakub Adam. They have gone around to Ireland and they have elected not to go through Ireland proper. They've portaged Ireland 1 and 2, but they go crashing through the waves at the exit of Ireland, having taken the portage on the left-hand bank. And that hasn't done their chances any good. Even though they had a relatively flawless run around, they're actually losing time and the problem is coming from behind because Tulani Mbanjwa and Lance Kaim are zooming in on fourth place as well. Now let's go back to the women's race and the decision is to go over Burma Road. This is going to be tough for Robin Kaim and Abby Ulansky. What is going to happen with Abby Adi and Anna Adamova? They've decided to go around. Now the ladies race is on because there's 40 seconds at the takeout. Robin Kaim and Abby Ulansky going down the hill. Robin doing all the hard work, dragging the boat really determined she's turned into a fantastic trail runner as well as being a super medalist at the uh, marathon world championships oh slips as she goes down but this is the nature of the game it happens in the doozy all the time abby ulansky lagging somewhere behind and really relying on her partner who's now dragging the boat down the road they know they've got to run this hard and really hard to stay clear of abby ad and anna adamova who are exiting ireland which they have portaged on the left and now they head down to where the Burma Road put in joins their paddling section. Are they ahead? Are they behind? Bianca and Tamika Hall, super paddlers in rough water. They love it in this sort of water. Hat nearly gets knocked off her head, but this is the way they like it best. Solidly in their third place and some way off the first two. Now, what is going to happen when Andy Burkett and Sponello Zondi get to pump house wears? And remember, Zondi came unstuck here and effectively lost the doozy here last year. They have opted to portage around while behind them Hank McGregor and Jasper Mocha shoot it. And they know they've got to because when they got to the bottom of the Burma Road portage, they heard that they had lost even more time. This is the tricky wear where uh, Zondi got it all wrong, but all good news today for Cam Skuman and Jakub Adam. Into the outskirts of Durban, the last of the nasty rapids, a thing of the past, and they streak down towards the beachfront and victory in the 2014. Now, barring a complete disaster, it's going to be victory number four for Andy Burkett. And for Sbonello Zondi, the huge crowd that is cheering his name is largely sympathetic because they remember the disaster of 2013. A huge crowd, Andy Burkett gets ready to celebrate, Sbonello Zondi copies him, and Andy Burkett doozy victory would simply not be the same without this. A fantastic victory and a margin that ballooned on the final day. Paddling into the headwind on the final stretch, Hank McGregor and Jasper Mocha. They are gutsy competitors, never say die paddlers, and they come home to an equally rousing welcome. Hank McGregor second for the second year running, but that doesn't mean he hasn't given all every step of the way. For Jasper Mocha, it's one step closer. It's a matter of time before the Capetonian goes one better. And at the end of a tough day, Cam Skuman and Jakub Adam come home to clinch the last step on the podium 
and one of those elusive medals is going back to the Czech Republic. A fantastic performance. Now, back at the Pump House Rapids, here is all the excitement. And some of the girls go bouncing through, Robin Keim leading Abby Ulansky, who's desperately trying to stay calm and composed in amongst the thrashing wild water. But good news for them as they get through Pump House. Meanwhile, behind them, Abby Adie and Anna Adamova realize they've got to do exactly the same. This is Pump House Rapid at 35, churning Cumex. And communication is fantastic from Abby to Adamova. And in the end, it's Robin Keim and Abby Ulansky who prevail. They've had to guts it out and they win their third consecutive women's K2 title. It was never easy. It was one of the closest women's races in many years and just a minute behind Abby Adie and Anna Adamova. Adamova in excruciating pain as she gets to the finish and already calls for the medics to come to her assistance. In the end there was some confusion about the women starting in the A batch as opposed to elapsed time but there was enough in the bank for Bianca and Tamika Hoare as under 23s to grab third overall in the women's race. So in the end, a handsome victory for Andy Burkett and Sponello Zondi, their margin on the final day growing as it always did over day one and day two. McGregor and Mocker in second and Skuman and Adam grabbing third. Sad to see the juniors dropping out of the tenth, they had to settle for 11 in the end. As far as the women is concerned, it's K2 title number three and a new record total number of K2 titles for Abby Ulansky, who's calling it quits on her competitive doozy career. Bianca and Tamika Hall hanging on to third, and of course the ever-consistent Abby Ady with a sixth second place with Anna Adamova. The Doozy 2014 is proudly brought to you by the KZN Department of Sport and Recreation, Isotonic Game, and Hunter.